I have never understood the fascination women have with Priscilla the Queen Maker, and I've said this before. I remember when she first started doing videos on TikTok, she was doing them out of a truck, like a semi truck. She was a truck driver and she was like super masculine. She was like so tomboyish. No makeup, no nails, nothing. So when I see her now, she's like the complete opposite of who she used to be. It's like, who is she really? Like, how are you listening to a lesbian woman about how to have a relationship with a man when everything that she's saying is basically built off of her not being healed from her own situation? Like, she was married to a man. You don't be married to a man and then suddenly become a lesbian. She was a lesbian before that. So it was like, why didn't you marry a woman? This debate right here was interesting to me. And I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts. So basically, when I suggest that you're a single mother, I'm suggesting that you're a single mother because I observe that you have a lack of communication skills. You are, you are displaying a lot of masculine behaviors. Yeah. You said you're a representative of women. You're a leader of women. Fantastic. Leaders are always under scrutiny because we want to know that you are somehow better off or superior or your thinking, philosophy, and methods have yielded greater outcomes than the average person, which gives you merit for actually teaching them. Some people think I shouldn't be a life coach despite being certified because of my personal life. Because I'm a single mother, they believe that since I'm not married and my son's father and I aren't together, I'm unqualified to offer relationship advice. And others cling to the rumors about my checker past, how I used to be about air model and worked at the swingers club, and use it as a reason to question my merit. But here's the reality. Life experience, resilience, and growth make me more qualified to guide others through challenges I've overcome adversity, raised a child alone, and built a successful career. My past doesn't disqualify me, it empowers me. I don't teach from a perfect pedestal, but from real world lessons learned, and that's where the true wisdom comes from. Now understand this, if you are a woman who can't even maintain a, a meaningful relationship with the father of your child, you failed in romance. You're trying to step out as the leader of women and you failed at marriage. Marriage is supposed to be till death do us part and it appears you're still alive. So you failed at that. You're no example of uh, romance. Furthermore, on a financial level, if you want to teach women, one of the most meaningful things to teach anyone in this land of opportunity is finances, and you've not excelled at that. And then if you look at education, you're just now getting a degree and you're creeping into menopause age. So you failed at that. So the fact is you have not outperformed any average woman. So what is so narcissistic in your mind that makes you think you're up here to be a teacher of others? You are not an example of others. You're having are very base. That's why I bring it up. And now that we got that established, I'm happy to go on to a number of debate topics that we have. But when you want to step out and say you're a leader, have some credentials. When I step out and say I'm a leader, I outperform the average man in all of the major categories. That For starters, not being able to communicate properly or being a woman who has masculine tendencies aren't the reasons why women become single mothers. That's for starters. He's saying she failed at romance because she couldn't maintain a meaningful relationship with the father of a child. Let's be clear, just because a romantic relationship ends doesn't mean it was meaningless for starters. And relationships end for all sorts of reasons, but reducing someone's worth to whether or not they stayed in a single relationship is uh, wildly simplistic. If anything, ending a relationship that no longer serves both people and still building a respectful co-parenting dynamic is more meaningful than sticking it out in a toxic or unfulfilling situation. And that's growth, not failure. It shows she got the maturity to prioritize her child's well-being over some superficial romance points. You know what I mean? To reduce a divorce to one partner's communication skills oversimplifies the nuances of a human relationship. People grow apart for various reasons, sometimes due to misaligned values, goals, or circumstances beyond their control and being a single mother is not a reflection of failure or poor communication it's often a result of two people making the best decision for themselves and their children many single mothers are incredibly skilled communicators given the demands of co-parenting balance and work and raising children so framing someone's personal experiences as failures to discredit their leadership potential is a narrow view that doesn't account for the growth resilience and wisdom gained through their life challenges 
leadership isn't about perfection but about adaptability and understanding the ability to inspire others through shared experiences if being superior is like the barometer for leadership then i guess he's gonna have to explain why some of the greatest leaders in history many who have made mistakes and suffered losses and face public criticism are still reverent you know leadership isn't about being flawless or superior in some arbitrary sense it's about showing resilience adaptability and inspiring others her ability to navigate a healthy co-parenting relationship is already evidence of greater outcomes than many divorced couples manage to achieve as for yielding greater outcomes who's to say what qualifies as greater is maintaining a successful co-parenting relationship raising a child earning a degree and continue to empower women not enough of an outcome sounds like she's outperforming a lot of her critics honestly to say that she failed at education because she got her degree late late according to who like education isn't some race to a finish line if she went back and earned her degree later on in life that's not a failure that's dedication and grit and getting a degree as an adult while juggling other responsibilities is more impressive than just doing it straight out of high school it shows perseverance and the ability to adapt and a commitment to self-improvement that's exactly the type of leader women should be learning from someone who didn't let life's challenges keep her from reaching her goals then he says she failed because she's not teaching women finance I teach women finance. Who said leadership means you have to teach finance? Leadership comes from many forms and not everyone's calling is to teach finance. She's already teaching women by setting an example of resilience, emotional intelligence, and balancing motherhood with personal growth. Besides teaching someone to navigate life and relationships, is valuable education. Maybe finance isn't her focus, but it doesn't mean she's failed at leadership. He then said that she hasn't outperformed the average woman, so she shouldn't be classified as a leader and then he proceeded to compare himself to her now what is his definition of average this sounds more like moving a goalpost desire to discredit her if she's overcoming personal setbacks and raising her child successfully and maintaining a stable co-parenting relationship she has already outperformed the so-called average by taking control of her circumstances leadership isn't about competing with others for superiority it's about empowering others to rise up too people aren't following her because she's some untouchable superior figure they're following her because they can relate to her they see her strength they want to learn from her experiences that's what real leadership looks like i don't have to like her to notice real leadership and i'm noticing a lot of men don't understand community and leadership at all but they want to get on women about women leading women like stay in your lane as a man lead men you are in no position to tell women who should lead women that's just weird it just seems like this dude is confusing leadership with perfectionism or thinking that failure or taking an alternative path somehow disqualifies someone from leading real leaders don't avoid failure they learn from it and help others navigate it too female leadership and male leadership are two different things and we need both not one without the other women need to be holding other women accountable and men need to be holding other men accountable there needs to be some type of standard set there